All right, we're gonna try a triangle congruence proof and we're gonna go paragraph style with it. So we are trying to prove that DEA is congruent to triangle FEC. Now there's a few different triangles going on here, so let's highlight it. You got triangle DEA right there. And then you've got triangle FEC right here. Okay, those are our two triangles. Now, before writing the actual proof and writing all our paragraph, uh, let's do a little outline. Let's mark up the diagram with what we know. Okay, so if I know that AC and DF bisect each other, okay, they bisect each other. That means they split each other at half. Usually when we're given information, we only know one way. It might say AC bisects DF. Well, that only means that DE would be congruent to EF. Pause a moment and think about that. But this time they bisect each other, which means both of those segments, AC and DF, get split in half, which means I can make those congruency marks that DE is equal to EF. So I've got two sides there. And remember with our proofs, we triangle proofs, we're either going side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Those are kind of the three parts you look at to prove R equal to each other. Um, and we have two sides. And looking at this, I know nothing about side DA and CF. However, look at here in the center, we have two lines intersecting at E. That means angle DEA and angle CEF are vertical angles, and that means they're congruent. So then we have our three parts, side, angle, side. Side, angle, side, triangles are congruent. All right, let's write it out then. So in our proof, um, we're gonna start with writing those things that we kind of figure out for ourselves. Um, and let's start with that bisecting idea we're given. So we can say, since the line AC or the segment AC bisects the line DF, then, um, so I'm saying DF is getting bisected, so then DE is congruent to EF. Okay, the two parts of that line are equal to each other by the definition of bisector. Um, I should say by definition of segment bisector. Okay, whenever a segment gets bisected, the two halves equal each other. I'm going to make an almost exactly same statement for the other angle, except this time we're using the fact that since DF does the bisecting, DF bisects AC, then AE is congruent to EC. Again, by the definition of a bisector. Okay, so pay attention to when you're giving what information allows you to make a statement. Um, pay attention to what of those segments is doing the bisecting. So looking at those two statements I made, you can see how first I laid out the information I have that allows me to make a statement. So since AC bisects DF, that's the info I have. Then I make my statement, DE is congruent to EF. And then I justify my statement with a theorem or a postulate or a definition. Okay, so that's my two segments. And then we have our vertical angles. So I can say also angle DEA is congruent to angle CEF, and I want to use three letters. So if I just say angle E congruent to angle E, well, I could be talking about a whole different host of angles. So I want to use three letters to label my angle. This would be by uh, the vertical angle theorem. Vertical angle theorem. Okay, so there's my justification for that. Now looking through this, 
um, I have right here one side, right here one side, and right here one angle. So I've got my three parts, so let's make my concluding statement. And when I write this concluding statement, I will list the three things that, the three bits of info that allow me to make the statement that the triangles are congruent. So I can say thus we have DE is congruent to EF, so those sides. We have the other side, AE congruent to EC. Um, it also helps to write these three before saying the triangles are congruent because it really forces you to focus and think about did I really prove three parts of my triangle? Do I really have the three correct parts? Okay, it makes you rethink those things before just saying boom, done with the proof. A little check. So there I have my side, side, and angle. However, the order it goes side, angle, side. So there's our info. So since we have those three congruent, then triangle DEA is congruent to triangle FEC. And what theorem backs it up? By angle, oh, I'm sorry. By side, angle, side, proof done. And do make sure as far as our congruency statement, the order is correct. D corresponds to F, E to E, C to A, side DE to side FE, and that is what we have. You can just make sure you um, get the corresponding parts of the triangles correct in the order of our congruency statement.